in 2000, uh, my, my wife passed away from cancer after a battle of lung cancer. And I was left with two grown children, but also two teenage girls, 13 and 14 years old. Right when they, be nice to have a mom there, right? You're coming into puberty and dealing with in intimacy and relationships and becoming a woman. So a lot of people will say, God, you must have worried yourself self sick over those girls. And I say, not really. I love my daughters way too much to worry about them. They go, what? I said, I love my daughters way, way too much to worry about them. They said, that doesn't make any sense. I said, I didn't expect that it would. But if I ever invent something in it, 75 years of age in two weeks, I doubt if my time's running out. But if I do invent something, I'm going to find out who marketed worry. And I'm going to have them market my invention. Why would I do that, folks? This is a joke, a little kind of an attempt at a joke again, folks. <laughs> because they've marketed one of the most destructive habits to human beings, physical, emotional, spiritual, and psychological well-being as a badge of courage. Have they not? Of course I worry. It shows that I care. So I tell people, for the sake of this example, I'm going to suggest, we'll just say that I worried six hours a day, not the 12, 14, or 16 that you told me you do with, with negative thinking, but six hours a day. And let's just see what happens in three or four minutes if you still think this is a good idea. that I did. So I said, make, here is um, mood, here is tension, and here is the body. So if I worry six hours a day, what's going to happen to my mood, folks? Am I going to become more lighthearted and joyful? Huh? Yes? Anybody say, yeah? No? What's going to happen? to my mood. It's going to go down. And I will f progressively feel depressed, true? And have you noticed if you stay depressed very long, you not only have a low mood, but it, it starts to affect, it's harder and harder to be nice to people. Has anybody besides me noticed that? So then you start getting irritable. And then eventually, if you keep going long enough, you start feeling disconnected. Has anybody besides me ever gotten this far? Where you feel disconnected from yourself, from people that you love, from even whatever you call God or source of it, whatever. You just feel disconnected. You feel totally alone. True? Sadly, folks, this is the person that can walk into a theater with an AK-47 and kill indiscriminately because they're in unbearable pain and they're not going alone. So this is not working out too well so far. I'm down here depressed, irritable, and disconnected, but there's always there's tension in the body. What's going to happen to my tension? More serene? More peaceful? No? Oh no! I thought this worry was going to work out okay for me. What's going to happen to my tension? It's going to go up, isn't it? If we're on a county or country road, do you have ribbing on the, some of the country roads? Yeah. Whereas if you start to fall asleep and you start heading into the ditch, the ribbing wakes you up, right? Is the ribbing your friend or your enemy? I'm going to suggest to you that all that we're later, I'm even going to show, show as far as diagnoses, the internalizing diagnoses, and different from the externalizing, and be really simple, they're all divine mind's way of trying to wake us up to the fact that we're using these three beautiful gifts in a way that they were not meant to be used. Let me say that again. Divine mind, to me, is always trying to, at our level of understanding, wake us up. So I would put, actually, I put a DHS up here. 
And people would say, DHS, is that Department of Human Services? I'd say, no, it's a Denoso head slap. <laughs> it's a wake up call. Okay? People will start having even panic attacks, true? I'm telling you, and people shock when I tell them this, panic attacks are God's way of trying to wake you up to what you're doing with his gift. I told you that after three minutes of upsetting thinking that create a biochemical imbalance in our brain, after 30 minutes we start turning off our healthy genes and activating emergency genes which get more and more and and eventually it goes to the unhealthy genes. Now, after 30 minutes, we start, we have 25,000 genes. I don't know, if, did you know that? We have 25,000 genes? Anybody? No? We have about 25, a, a tomato has 30, 20, let's see, 34,500, I think, which is kind of humbling, right? There's a little worm this size that has 23,600. We have 25,000. But here's what's amazing is there's only 5,000 of the genes are on and 20,000 are off. Think of a huge hall with 25,000 light bulbs and only one in five is on. If we activate this stress system for more than 30 minutes, we start turning off the healthy genes and the healthy physiology and turning on illness genes. So am, am I surprised when I see, and please don't hear blame, when I'm I surprised when I see somebody comes in that's 45 or 50 years old and it's been spending 15 hours a day in stressful thinking that they have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, osteoarthritis, migraine headaches, fibromyalgia. I, one time I listed 11 things and this person turned white and said I have all 11 of those. My heart went out to him. If I create enough biochemical imbalance that it's endangering me, it might get a message sent up to a place in the brain called the locus ceruleus, which literally injects noradrenaline into my body. If we had a nurse here and she injected the right amount, I would suddenly, when that she injected the noradrenaline, I would suddenly, little trouble getting my breath. I'd feel my heart beating out of my chest. I'd, I'd feel a little nauseated, I'd feel a little uh, shaky. I'd feel some perspiring, I'd feel some hot flashes and some cold flashes, I'd be having what? A panic attack. It's meant to last four minutes. It can last for hours because people get frightened and they don't say, thank you, Lord, thanks for the nozo head slap. Got it. I'm going to leave my thinking alone until I feel better in four minutes. No, they get frightened because nobody's told them. And they go, oh my God, am I having a heart attack? Oh my God, am I having a stroke? Oh, hey. and the brain keeps going. <laughs> More noradrenaline. It can last for hours. Hours. It's meant to last four minutes because the half-life of norepinephrine, noradrenaline, is one minute. So in one minute, there's half left. Two minutes, 25% left. Three minutes, 12% left. Four minutes, 6% left. Five minutes, 3% left. Does that make sense? Does that resonate? Nobody tells you that, though, do they? They just give you Clonopin and Xanax. What happens to my body? I'm going to start having pain somewhere in the body. Headaches, stomach pain, st bowel stuff. Hmm? There's, there's, is it three or five times more neural receptors in the bowel, in the, in the, in the bowel than there is in the brain, in the central nervous system? Pain. Then I'm going to start having sleep problems. Initially, I'm going to have irregular sleep. I'm going to have trouble getting asleep, trouble staying asleep. And then I'm going to have trouble with my memory, <coughs> misplacing things. Anybody besides me ever got so stressed that you start, can't remember shit, you know? Hmm? Did I, I didn't say that. So now I'm down here, and I'm feeling like crap. And my two, de my two daughters, my two teenage daughters, come grieving their dead mother. How much good am I to them? Hmm? Zero. Some people, use, somebody usually, my patients always 
so oftentimes they say none. I said, I don't know why you're bringing the nuns into this. <laughs> I didn't talk about the nuns. <laughs> but they do. None. I would, very, I would not be of much help to them because I'm not able to be... Pre Who did this to me? I got to... I mean, I'm not going to hit them, but I'm going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Who did this to me? I did. Did I do it because I like feeling like crap? No, it was innocent. It was innocent. But did I do it? Yes. I took this, I need maybe tomorrow I'll get a darker pen. I took this powerful gift of thought, this gift of thought, and I used it against myself, this beautiful gift God gave me, or whoever's in charge of the universe, whatever you want to call that, has given me this beautiful gift to be able to go through life. Otherwise, without the power of thought, I wouldn't be able to go through life. And I've misused it, and I've created a tremendous amount of dis-ease. Would you say that's true? Spending 12 to 14 hours a day in upsetting thinking? 